Good morning. So uh, welcome uh, here and uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm Sander Liesma and probably you don't know me and maybe you don't know Abra Gadara. So I give a short introduction for both. Um, I'm a designer, an app designer. And I'm also a father of uh, two daughters, as you can see here. And I love mountains, I love the sea, and I really love my desktop. And, but of course, I'm also co-founder of Abracadabra. And um, Abracadabra was founded in 2010. Uh, we were in an airport, and we were waiting, and um, uh, our kids were bored, we were tired. We were bored, and the kids were tired. And um, uh, we th thought, like, come on, let's, let's download some kids' apps so, uh, so our kids could be amused. And uh, my girlfriend was searching and searching, and uh, she couldn't find anything. We had to wait four hours, so it's a long time to search. And we couldn't find anything. It was really, everything was uh, or extremely ugly, or it was boring, or it was in English. And my children can speak Dutch can speak Swiss German, because my girlfriend is Swiss, but they can't speak English, so it was no use to them if it was in English. <coughs> so then we thought like, hey, why don't we make our own apps who are beautiful, who are uh, sparkling and are in our own language? So we did, and from 2010 till now we made a, a few apps, and uh, as you can see, this is the, the, what we did so far. And uh, there are a few not, not already on the market, but that will come. Um, what I want to talk about today is about digital play, out of the perspective of me as an app designer, but also out of the perspective as me as a father. Um, but first I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, who of you got a smartphone or a tablet at home? <laughs> so that's, that's a lot. An obvious question, probably. Who of you are parents or having kids? So that's a few. Yeah. <laughs> so who of you will give their smart or will not give their smartphone to their to, to the child? Okay, a few, a few. Okay, we did a we did a survey in 2010 to ask also these questions to people. And we were asking them if they also would give this to their child. And they said, like, uh, oh no, I would not give my brand new devices to the sticky fingers of my child. <laughs> and that's three years ago. And so the, the things changed. Um, but what is so interesting about these apps, and especially for kids, what is so interesting? I go a little bit back in history. I go when I was almost her age, around four. We had this uh, Commodore 64, that was really cool. You had to load in your computer game with a cassette tape. And you can imagine that it took ages to load in the game. It really took like, like 10, minutes, 10 minutes to find the game, 10 minutes to load in again. So you had plenty of time to do other things. And, uh, but uh, to, to control this computer, uh, you use a joystick or a keyboard. And, um, my brother was a little bit elder, and he was far better with controlling this joystick. And it is also, you have this joystick on one side, and you have, of course, the screen on the other side, and you have to control something far away on the screen. So it's very remote, actually. And if you, if you see on every game computer, you have in all the 30 years that passed, it's actually always the same. You have a keyboard to control it, you had a mouse or some other controller or a joystick, and it's very remote. It's really, really far away. Yeah, and of course, you had Duck Hunt from yeah. Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hear some fans here. <laughs> you had this real plastic gun where you can shoot these pixelated ducks. And uh, it, it's more like real life, but it's still a remote control. And you, yeah, of course, had the Nintendo Wii. And uh, that's actually more a sophisticated remote control. Uh, and then in 2007, the market became ready for a touchscreen. Apple introduced the smartphone with a touchscreen, and something happened there because now suddenly you could touch somewhere, and on the place where you touched it, there it happened. So uh, uh, children could suddenly use software. Also, people who never touched a computer before could yet suddenly use software, and that's really a leap forward. And if you see, uh, if you're using a um, game computer 
that was always such a hassle with setting it up, put a DVD in it, loading the game, malfunction, whatever, something was not right, and then you want to play with your friend who lived somewhere else. You had to drag all the stuff with you and with a big hassle again and setting it up, put DVD inside, and that changed. I mean, your smartphone or your tablet uh, has a place in your bag or in your pocket. You just grab it out, click, play. And that has some similarities with tangible toys, with, with these analog toys, because you can grab it and you can play with it. Uh, for, it's also very easy to play with it, because if you see a car, you can sit on it, you can drive with it, you see a pencil, you can draw with it. But there's also, the children also use play toys also for completely something else, because there are no rules for it. So you can also throw with a pencil, I don't know if they do, but <laughs> you can, and you can also make a building out of it. That's all, you can also do that. And it's so di different with software, because software is really rigid. It's really strict. You have to walk the line of the game. It's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow you to cheat or whatever. So you have to be, as a de designer for apps, you have to be really clear and appealing for kids. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's, they don't understand immediately what you, what you want to say. So it's, uh, you have to be into it. You have to actually grab in the head of a child to understand if they understand you. Uh, I give a little bit of an example for this one. It's like, uh, does anybody know what will happen if you touch this white square? Oh, do you just grow? Does it go? Does it the door? What opens? Sorry? It will turn colors. It will turn colors. It will okay. Well, it will be nice. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I will a little bit help you. It's this. Yeah. It's just a stop button. But little children see just a white square. For them, it's not intuitive. They don't have a preconception of symbols. So uh, we already we thought this already. And um, to give you an example, oh, yeah, go a little bit in front. Uh, you have to make it really intuitive for, for children at least, but also for people who use games. It's like, and if you can't make it intuitive, then you have to help them a little bit so that they understand what you mean. Um, an example for what we did with Abracadabra, this is an app, Count the Animals, and we have this in all our apps, is that we don't use a play button for the main screen. So people get, if nothing happens, people get impatient, so they tap on iPad, and you go to the play screen. So it's very intuitive. And then this funny thing happens. Remember, this is called Count the Animals. All the parents tap on the little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty strange. But all the children tap on the horse, so that was okay. <laughs> so, and then this happens, you hear one, and you hear well done, and you go to the next screen, and then you see two, pussy, uh, two cats, and, that's, uh, and then you know the system, you have to tap your, your animals. And the parents also understood, so you hear one, two, well done, go to the next screen, next screen, next screen, until you come at 14, I think this is, I'm not going to count them. <laughs> but it's uh, until 20, you could go. So, um, the funny thing is, is that most developers, app designers, publishers for apps, think, already in front, that their app is the clearest ever made. Everybody will love their app. But it's not true. Because... <coughs> You have to test it first. You have to give your app to somebody else. That's called a usability test. Probably a few of you know what it is. And you just have to give your iPad with your, with your app on it to somebody else, not saying anything, and just have a look what they're doing. And you see immediately that there are some problems. People don't understand everything immediately, but you figured out already. Uh, you can also test if your app is appealing, and that's if you uh, before you make an app, that's very important because otherwise you have to redesign your whole app. Before, before your app, you have to make a sketch or a sort of uh, screenshot how you think you, your app would look like, and you show it to people. And if they have a sparkle in their eye or they have questions or whatever, you know that you're onto something. And then you're going to redesign it and design it until it's, it's ready to make an app for it. Another example for uh, usability testing. Was this one? This is Robin and Dove. It's a it's a practice math for children, and it's for your plus or minus. And it's not available in the store yet. It would be around December, January, 
around there it's coming into store, so you have to wait a little bit. And um, what we did, so if I go just immediately to the screen, you just practice your math. This is 5 plus 5, we all know that's 10. So we put this in, and people who, which I gave the iPad said like, yeah, and how? Just give the right answer, so why don't I, why doesn't anything happen then? We thought like, oh, we need an answer button in it. We, 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 we have to have this in it. So nobody found the answer button. And so we made it bigger, a place, a different symbol, and in the end we found a solution and that was, you have to let it blow it up. So after you put your digits in it, it blows up, and then you go, oh, okay, something happens here, you click on it, you get a big okay, and then <laughs> it was right, and you go to the next, the next screen. Um, <clears throat> And then the problem is solved afterwards also, everybody knew that you had to tap on the other key after you put your digits in. Um, I, I just want to go back to the toys again. Because if, if uh, I think something very interesting is in here, because if you see if, if a child has a toy, it's of course very focused on the toy, but it's also focused on the, on the space around him, on the, on the surroundings, because if he doesn't, he bump into a wall, or that was his idea, but anyway, he's busy with the surroundings. And also, if you, if you're coloring, for example, you color, but you have to grab your pencil, so you have to be busy with also the surroundings around you. And, um, oh, I have to put this one in. <laughs> you can see he's busy with the surroundings. And, but also, we can see what he's doing. So if another child comes to him, he says, like, hey, you're playing with an applet, how can I join in? I can be your pilot. So it's very social. If somebody is using a tablet, that's something else. I mean, you're very focused. Focus? Where's the focus? Yeah, there it is. You're very focused on the, on the screen. And you're this tiny little screen, you also do everything around it. And as you see the, the, the little lines there, there's a sort of world behind it which we can't see. And also, if somebody is, is busy playing with it, it's, it appears that he's not there anymore. It's a sort of instant autism or something. So you can't reach him. It's really, that's, that's, uh, and I th thought it was really interesting because on one hand, the concentration and the focus of, of a, a child playing on a tablet, it's, it's good. And on the other hand, it's also good to be aware of your surroundings and to be social. So we thought, like, let's make an app for this, and it's called Learn Your Colors. We read it right. And it's uh, actually a book full of colors, and a child can make photos according to the same color it has. So if a child, uh, you, you give your child your smartphone or your tablet, and it's running through the house, searching for the right objects for, with the right color, and probably present it to mother or father. Uh, you can also make your own photos and just try out to, to see if your child can find the object or whatever it is. So it's very busy with its surroundings. Another uh, example is Fresh, and this is, a, this is a quiz for fruit and vegetables for kids. And if I give my daughter a, a, the app, or she, she puts it on herself, immediately the other daughter comes because she hears the questions and she knows the answers, so she wants to help immediately in it. So it's very social. And this is just a one-player mode. So you have also a two-player mode, which they can go against each other or with each other. And uh, they have a lot of fun with this. Uh, another thing, what I found really interesting was is that if you use tangible toys, you, the, the analog toys, you're most of the time very productive. If you building, uh, if you're playing with Lego, you have a building afterwards. If you have a, you're, you're coloring, you, you have a nice drawing afterwards. If you're playing with dolls, you make an imaginary world. But if you're using, uh, if you're playing digitally, it's mostly consuming. You have to walk the line of the game. And a lot of parents also um, give their tablet or iPhone to their child as a sort of, um, sort of uh, they don't need to give them attention then on that moment. It's a sort of shut up tool, actually. <laughs> and that's, that's, I think it's, I thought like, why can't we make more productive apps on the store? There are, but I think that's, that's nice to have more of that. Of course, Learn Your Colors, what I showed before, was already a productive app because they made their own col uh, the color book, books of color, actually. So uh, we came up with uh, Theater, it's a puppet show. 
It's called now Hobbitville, by the way. <laughs> it's, now we sometimes switch names. And uh, this is what you what you can do is you cho you choose your scenery, props, and you choose two puppets, and then it's free play. They can play with it. And uh, it's, it's it's also very social because you actually have to play with two, and it's much more fun. One uh, is is playing one doll, the other one is the other puppet, and they're making up their own world, their own story. And it's, so it's a very productive app. Um, then I come to my final thought, thanks to Joe Springer. <laughs> it's, uh, what I see is, is as an app designer, I really love the possibilities of the amusement, of also the education, what you can, can do. And uh, I'm really at mind, I'm constantly thinking how you can improve your apps, how you can make apps. Uh, but as a father, I also love the possibilities of this education and amusement, but I'm totally not at mind. I mean, if my kid is bored, I'm not giving immediately or my iPad or the iPhone. I mean, it's allowed to be bored and it's also good sometimes to be bored because you anyway have to deal with this. And uh, they can also do a lot of other stuff. So they're playing outside, uh, they can have friends, uh, they can color, they can uh, craft. But they can also play an app, but also watch television and, and do other stuff. And so it's just a tiny part of a consumer life, actually. And that was my final thought. Thank you all. <laughs> Any questions for Zan? Okay. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, yeah, nice, uh, great talk. Thank you very much. Uh, I was wondering if you were uh, making uh, like prototypes and mock-ups for your app designs, do you um, show them uh, both to a build engine? Yeah. And yeah. How does that work? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's but it, you see in the in the market it's like the the, the buyers are actually the, the parents, so you have to also have it because it's, uh, there's the appeal also to parents, but children are actually the one who decide that you have to buy it, so as and it has to work with it, so they have to also appeal to them, and uh, they have to work with it, so it's both we do both. So basically, the uh, in a more traditional way, the the parent is the client and the kid is the yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what can you do with the public shelves? Is it, can you change them from place? Or? Yeah, you can, you can move them around and they, they are like real puppets, so they are hanging. You can also put your own face in it, and that's just the side part, but you don't have to do this. So it's, uh, it's you just make a play. And are there different surroundings also? Yeah, you have, you have uh, six surroundings. You have uh, tons of props which you can put in, also also animated props, and uh, also series animated, and uh, so you can nice. do a lot of things. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for the talk, Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yeah. I was intrigued by your last uh, thinking that it's just a tiny part of the whole cycle eh, for a child to play. And I was wondering if you also uh, are thinking further than the app, because there's, for example, a series of puppets from different cultures, and they have like an app online, you can play with them, the, right, the dolls are there. Mm -hmm. So you have different versions, so the app is part of a sort of a completely toy cycle. Uh, yeah. Is that something you're thinking about as well? Or? Yeah, I'm thinking about this, mm -hmm. and but it's like to, to put things in production, it's it's a lot of money. And that's that's mostly the problem. Yeah, or yeah. But we have we have actually sort of uh, principles because these puppets, which it, what it was in the in the puppet show, you can also print it out and make it yourself. So we we uh, we like the analog part also very much. Yeah. So you can use it, and actually every app has this. So. Yes. Yeah, great talk, great talk. Uh, Thank you too. I was wondering what you do to get uh, the attraction for your uh, apps in the in the market. Yeah. Uh, we use social media and um, we also make a promo movie of it. That's very important because uh, most of the people see this and then buy. Um, yeah, actually, what you have to do to sell your product really good is to have a contact at Apple's. <laughs> we don't have it, but it's, that was the right way. That's, that's, then you get featured or you can, you can ask to be featured. And that, would, that, that sells. So that's actually the best thing to do. Yeah, the top list, so. 
Yeah, the top list is, is if you're there and everybody sees you, buy, <laughs> you stay in the top list because you get bought. Yeah. And that's the whole circle, actually the whole circle. But you first have to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's always the problem of, the, of, of app publishing. Uh, did you experiment with uh, free apps versus paid apps and free apps with in-app purchases? Yeah, uh, no, um, we don't do in-app purchases because we uh, we don't buy yeah, it's, 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 yeah, we it's yeah. in the indeed as well. <laughs> so it's it's uh, that's overly. But we we did experiment with we had live we have live versions and uh, um, yeah, it's it's live versions of of course are downloaded a lot. And uh, you have always a part of the downloaded version uh, is, is paid. So it's, uh, I hope this answers your question. Yeah. How many downloads are there? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I, can't, I can't tell anything about this. This is, this is like uh, for every, uh, to be honest, I don't actually really know how many downloads <laughs> because I never counted them. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now this is this is sort of a sort of secret for all the designers I think. This is uh, this is really difficult to say. Are you apps gender neutral or more? We try to, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's good. like like uh, for example with the, the, this new app, this Robin and Dahl, we really try to have a gender gender neutral, but it's it's it has a robot in a in a, in a dog. And uh, we also change colors and so on. So it's it's a little bit. Uh, we try to. It doesn't work always. Um, you started. Uh, you got the language. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it also available in multiple languages? Uh, the most of the apps are at least in sixteen languages. Oh. Uh, <laughs> some at least. At least. Yeah, yeah, at least. Yeah, it's a, like like the, like the public show doesn't have any language. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but like uh, like uh, this color app has 22 languages, for example. That's that's we try to gather always a lot of languages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, um, I'm wondering how long does it take you from idea until you actually have it in the app store? You don't so. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, sometimes it takes a year. Oh, wow. And um, but if you if you I'm also working with a developer which is really close, then you can do it in two months. But it's mostly if, you, if you're having having a really complex app, it takes a year. Yeah. How, how do you make sure you have um, high quality translations in your languages? We use only people uh, who, who talk who native. words that native to the native speakers actually. Yeah, because so we never use use translation or whatever. Yeah. No. That was the same question. <laughs> in the back. So, which app? Which app? Uh, I don't know which the children uh, likes the most, mm -hmm. but I know which is the most downloaded. That's that's for sure. Come the animals. That was the most. That's the most uh, mainstream app we have. We all know that uh, apps will disappear in the next five years. <laughs> Just like your your Commodore sixty four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's next? What's what's exciting you? Uh, I don't have a clue, <laughs> but I will I will be on it. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, there are some things which you can see what is what is up front, but um, I believe what what on this moment, which which what going to be really exciting is probably the, the that you don't need a screen anymore and that the things are going to be more tangible. They really experimental experiment also with touch and everything that things have really have. Like smart toys, for instance? Yeah, more in depth. Yeah, no, no, it's more like, like you don't see it. It's, it's like a screen, but it's, which is just sort of hologram, which you also can touch more in But so it's not five years. About okay. Yeah, but it's not more than, it's more than five years, probably. Why is it disappearing then? Oh. Yeah. No, just, just like the Commodore 64. <laughs> Everything well, has what to do you think? <laughs> well, I think if you look at toys, for instance, for entertainment, I think we will get very smart toys. So the teddy bear will be smart, more intelligent, and the car will be intelligent. So I think user interfaces, graphic user interfaces will disappear or become obsolete. 
what you have already in this moment uh, toys in the market, which is, for example, a, uh, a uh, how do you say this, this, this animal, which where, where you can put your iPhone in or your, your tablet, and then it has eyes and it can talk to you and can learn. So this is more a smart toy. So, but it's an app. <laughs> What's the most uh, joyful part uh, about working for your target uh, children? The, the, uh, creating the stuff is of course very very much fun, and also testing it and see that they really like it. That that's that's really mm -hmm. awesome. Okay. Can I ask something? <laughs> <laughs> if you test for kids, yeah. uh, do you test to individual kids, or do you put them in a group together and just? throw your iPad on the table and let them... We did once, and uh, that didn't work. Okay. Because that, that's, you, you can't see what, every, what happens, and then it's, it's actually it's useless. Okay, so and it's, also, it's always one just one-to-one, one yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just noticed your iPad, yeah. where you uh, combine digital with analog. <laughs> Is there some secret... Uh, um, perspective on the on the new things we can expect. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, uh, I'm, all, I'm 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 very like I also said in the final thought. I'm very very much into to the apps, but I'm also very analog. So it's it's I, I love both, and I don't think one has to go away because you have the other. Yeah. Just to be clear, he has a printout stuck to the front of his iPad. With all the slides that are coming up, so. <laughs> because otherwise you guys wouldn't have a clue what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, final question? Anybody? Yeah. Are you thinking about making apps for adults as well, or do you want to do I'm always thinking about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what I really love one one time to do is uh, to make a, a game for adults, and uh, I, I like this too. It's, I don't I don't feel like I'm I'm narrowing myself. For this, it's just it's just fun to do in this moment. So I do. It. That's awesome. Okay. okay, big hand for some. Thank you.